Do 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 Oh, so I I don't have access to my intro, so I'm gonna make it manually. Hi, everybody. My name is Rodgon. I'm an artist, a teacher, a designer, a cartoonist, illustrator, and a graphic designer, marketer, advertiser, whatever you wanna call me. And today we are going to be drawing something cool. Now. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we did yesterday and we are going to move on from there. We learned a little bit about how to use a technique called the swish and ball. And we learned how to use that to come up with our lower bodies a little bit easier. If you guys are joining us, make sure that you guys like and subs uh, share the stream if you guys are joining. That is your cost to entry of the lesson for today. Today we are here for about 30 to 40 minutes because I have an onward call that I have to meet with the people from the World Illustrated Championships. And I'm going to be participating in the World Illustration Championships again this time around. So, woohoo! You are early. Actually, not really necessarily early. You are just here on time. We haven't started our lesson. I'm just going over the recap of what we did yesterday. So, yesterday we drew a technique called the swish and ball. Essentially, that technique consists of drawing a ball, a ball, or a shape, draw a ball inside of that shape, and then draw a swish to create your legs. Why do we do this? Well, this is a very easy way to be able to get your legs in very interesting positions. So once you have your ball, you can change those to be different sizes, different angles, and you will always get a slightly interesting waist position. Now, this can also be used to be able to draw your legs from behind, from the front, and from every other angle. So it's very cool to be able to use a technique like this to be able to draw your things. Uh, once you get comfortable drawing like a shape for a body, you will get access to your legs really easy by drawing a circle underneath where you want your waist, draw your sushi. Yes, that's what I call them, sushis. And then proceed to give them perspective so you know which way the leg is going and give yourself a little space for the crotch. That is going to give you the ability to draw legs really, really easy in a multitude of different placements you're going to be able to come up with poses really, really easy as well. So if you're gonna be drawing a whole character, something like this would happen. So you would draw your body, you would draw your ball, you would draw your feet. Let's draw something cool. Okay, it's crossing his legs. Maybe it's a pinup. And then you have here, you have the upper body. So at the top of the upper body, you can draw an eyeball, come up with a rib cage. That's gonna be your neck, your neck muscles into your collarbone, into your arms. So it's just another way to visualize things, okay? So, so the circle is the pelvis. Yes, exactly. It's the pelvis and so the circle ends up being the crotch, the hip bones are at the connection points of these. If you draw a little line right here, you can grab like underwear for your character. And then on top of this, you can add your anatomy. So once you have the placement and the flow that you want, you can add your anatomy on top of that to come up with your designs to be exactly how you want them to be. If you want it to be nice and smooth, you can draw smooth muscles. If you want it to be nice and muscly, like Dragon Ball or a bodybuilder, you would draw more segmented muscles. Can we do a how to draw face proportions in the whole face in general? Yeah, let's do that, let's do that. That actually sounds like a great idea. But in order to do that, I need you guys to help me out. If you guys want my help, I need your guys' help in order to grow. And this is the one, gonna be the only pitch that I ever do. I want to reach more people because I want to teach more people. I don't want money. I don't want like donations. I want students. I want to be able to reach as many people as possible. So your entry fee to these lessons isn't money. It's not donations. It's not going and subscribing to my crap. No, 
It's literally just sharing the stream so more people can see it and liking it so that I can see uh, my ego gets boosted when I see little hearts go. So if you guys hit this, it makes me happy. If you hit this, it makes other people happy because it gets taught to other people. So we don't do any sort of, um, we don't keep knowledge to ourselves in this group, okay? We don't really, we don't do that. Uh, if we know something, we share it. And we share it so that other people don't have to struggle. And that's literally the reason that I do this stuff with you guys every single day. Okay, so let's talk about the face. Face, what is in the face? The face, features, proportions, and tips. Okay, we're going to go and we're going to navigate the face in a way that I'm going to uh, explain every little detail and why and where it's supposed to go. So this one will be a good lesson for you guys if you guys want and struggle with heads in general. I'm not going to necessarily do it through tips. I'm going to just give you guys very basic mapping points that you guys can use if you actually pay attention to them and you guys will be able to actually draw things a little bit better. So once we get to, let's say, 50 shares, we will start our lesson. Now, it seems like you guys are very, 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 very slow at sharing the stream. So I know that it's annoying and I know it's like an extra step that you guys got to do. But that is literally the only thing that I'm asking you guys to do. For the next 40 minutes, you guys will be drawing and sketching in your sketchbooks, learning a lot of cool things. So do me a favor, help me out, share the stream. Let's get to 100 shares and let's start this lesson. Cool. You guys made it. Awesome. You guys are awesome. You guys are quick. So now let's start our faces. So when we are drawing faces, normally when we are drawing and we are taught how to draw, they teach us how to draw something similar to this. Okay. We get taught to draw some variation of this in one shape or file another. Most of the time they tell you to divide the shape in two, like in half the entirety of the shape, and that's where your eye line is supposed to be. Now, I divide it up to here because I don't like including the chin. I consider, I consider the chin a completely different separate part of the body. <laughs> like, like for some reason, it's just easier to map everything out without the chin. So I'm going to not map out my head shape with the chin. I'm going to simplify it and I'm going to keep it as a nice little basic circle and box, and I'm going to split this in half. Okay. So keeping it, keeping it spaced out in halves is going to help you understand things in difficult positions. So we'll talk about that in a little bit later when we talk about like rotating the features. So if you keep it in half, right, you understand that you have two eyes, a mouth and a nose. So we have two eyes, we just have to make space for two eyes, a nose, a mouth, and some eyebrows. That is essentially the core concept of a face. So now getting these to be, this can be in a lot of different ways, shapes, and forms. So if you start with it just being in half, it's easy because we just split it in half. You can add your chin afterwards to give it like whatever look you want. Add that after because it's just it just adds complication to it. So now let's draw some eyes. Doo, 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 doo. And once we have our eyes in there, and we're going to simplify them in the way of little like dots right now. Uh, so we don't have to focus on the detail until we get to the detail part. So just for mapping purposes, we're going to have our eyes about halfway up our shape. About halfway up of this, we're going to have our eyebrows. The upper part right here is going to be our hairline. So about halfway is your eyebrows, about halfway down your face is going to be, uh, well, let's see if this is the mouth right here. This would be about the tip of the nose, most likely, for an actual proportion. Okay? So, and then you have your mouth in this little section right here. Yay! So, as you guys can see, this gets split into one, two, three parts. Most of the features, including your ears, by the way, fall into that little second section. So we are going to focus on that section 
a lot more than we are on our hairline and in our mouths because that is just more important to understand. Okay? So we split everything in two and then we easily identify our basic points that we all know we have. So let's do it again. We'll have our head shape. I like to draw boxes because the sides are easier to map out. The head and the top can be drawn, like your hair can be drawn on top of your hairline. So I can add my hair on top, but I already have my hairline there from my initial shape. So I don't have to worry about that. So this is after, the chin is after, the ears are after, and we focus mostly on dividing this now into threes. Now that we understand that these sections can be divided into threes instead of two. Now we have two measurements. If we divide it in two, we're gonna get our eyes. If we divide it in threes, we're gonna have our section for our features. So now we can start combining those two elements and being to start putting things in place. So about half of it, this is a third, but about half of the way up, we're gonna have our eyes. Make sure to keep in mind that any space that you leave in the front right here is going to be the width of your nose. So any space that you leave in between your eyes is going to be the spacing for your nose. If you leave a lot of space between them, your nose is going to be wider. If you leave a little bit of space between them, like if you just don't make the space too big, you're going to have a thinner nose. If you have space between them that's larger, you're going to have a wider nose. That's just the nature of having something be small and something be larger. So the spacing you choose, it's not wrong to add more space. There's people that have really, really, really far apart eyes. There's people that have really close together eyes. It's not wrong. It's just different. But understanding what you're doing as you're drawing it is what allows you the ability to control that and manipulate it in a way that you are able to control it. So any space that you leave between your eyes is going to be the spacing for your nose. That's also going to be how you dictate where your eyebrows go. From your eyes, you're going to do this. It's super easy to draw eyes in both ways and directions. If you draw your eyebrow first, let's say you draw an eyebrow first and you really like the placement of the eyebrow. Bring down a, a tapered box down and you will get the spacing for your eye. That's it. It honestly is. That's, that's all you really need to do. Like find one or the other. In this case, we have the eye. Taper a box up and follow the guideline and you have yourself an eyebrow. So the spacing, regardless of how far apart your eyes are, let's say we have our eyes right here, super far apart. I'm going to draw my eyebrows and I'm going to connect them to the edge of my face, of my eyes. And that's going to give me the place for the upper part of my eye socket. So this is going to translate into anatomical terms of having your eyeball and your upper eye socket up here. That is essentially what this turns into. Giving you the placement for your eyebrow, uh, for your upper eyelid, the shadows that you need underneath your eyebrows, and it gives you a nice little first understanding of how to connect your eyebrows to your eyes. Then from here, you have your eyebrows, and your eyebrows lead to your nose bridge. So your eyebrows lead to your nose bridge on both sides. The spacing that you choose is going to be both the upward trajectory of your nose and the width of your nose. Because your nose has perspective. It is a shape that has both it's kind of like a box right so if you think about it like this 
It's like a box that has two sides and a top. So that is something that you guys can take in mind whenever you guys are drawing your noses. Stop drawing just little sushis. Like, don't draw this. Don't just do this. That doesn't teach you anything. Whenever you're drawing these, realize that what you're drawing is essentially this. You're drawing a bunch of shapes within that space. So now this is normally going to give you a natural triangle if you are drawing a face. So if you draw a face and you draw a triangle, you're going to have the distance for your nose, eyebrows, and the box down brings to your eyes. So now you have a measurement that you guys can use to be able to come up with this distance. And this triangle can be modified to anything you need. If you need it to be bigger, modify the triangle so that the triangle ends up being the shape that you need for your character. So when you're drawing a face, and if you want to know the distance from here, now you have a little measurement that you guys can use. So understanding the nose bridge is just, it's easy to see it like a butterfly, right? It's also like if you are drawing your head and you're trying to figure out how to figure out the nose bridge, draw a butterfly in the middle. This will be your nose bridge into your eyebrows. This will be the intersection of your eye. And these will be your cheekbones going into your chin. So that's another way that you guys can see it as well if you guys have problems understanding this basic concept of the nose bridge. That is another easy way that you guys can start mapping out your shapes. Now, another thing that I like to do whenever I'm drawing my faces is to start my faces and I like to start with my nose. Uh, why is that? Well, let me explain. So the reason that I start my shape and then I start with the nose is because it allows me the power to dictate where my face is gonna be looking immediately. If my nose is gonna be here, and noses are really easy to draw, guys. Like, oh my God, like I just came up with, I, I didn't come up with it, I think. I don't I think I saw it anywhere, but I'm pretty sure this has to be seen somewhere else. Essentially, if you draw this triangle for your nose, you mid, your midline, you draw a triangle, right? So draw a dot for the top of your nose and then connect that dot to all three points. And you have a nose. It's kind of cool, huh? Draw your shape, draw your triangle for your nose, draw the whatever length you want for your nose, connect all three points so you have the perfect perspective for it, and then stylize it any way you want. Let's draw one going up. Triangle. I want it to be rounder this time though. I have the bottom and I have the top. Triangle, looking down, dot, connect all three. So noses, from now on, become a triangle for your shape, for your base. Right? And then you draw a dot, <laughs> make a little diamond from your nose, and then stylize it any way you want. So now that you know how to draw a mouth or a nose, but from a triangle, you can start having fun drawing it in different perspectives. Drawing really cool ones. So, noses are easy now. 
You are welcome. Do you have a video on this? Well, this is the video on this. We're just talking about it right now. <laughs> so, okay. So now that we know how to draw noses in any direction, we're going to practice by drawing circles. We're going to draw a circle inside our circle, draw a triangle, and we're going to draw a nose in a bunch of different directions by connecting three dots and drawing your nose. Yay! And now we understand that the spacing between our eyes is going to be our nose bridge. So we can start drawing through our shape. Yay, te ya, te ka, woohoo! I've been making it overcomplicated for nothing. Yeah, it's, it's actually not that hard. It's triangle, set a dot, connect all three dots to it, and now you have the perfect placement for your nose. What about girl noses? Ooh, well, if you want a girl nose, you're going to want to have like super seductive eyes, right? Like, oh, yeah, look at those. Look at those eyes. They're so seductive. Oh, they have they have like angles and stuff and they have eyebrows. Ooh, angly eyebrows. Ooh, look at those seductive eyebrows. And then we're going to draw the nose. The nose is going to fall in between these two things, right? Because that's our nose bridge. So we're going to draw literally a triangle in between here. We're going to draw whatever, dot, like a dot. We don't want a really big nose for a girl. We're just going to make a little tiny dot. I'm going to connect all three dots. And that gives me my guideline that I can use to draw my really cute noses with my nose bridge. Anime style noses are normal noses. This is, this is an anime style nose. A triangle. We're going to draw a diamond that connects all three, and then we're only going to color that part. So you end up with this. That is what an anime nose is. So that is essentially, you're simplifying anatomy to the extent that's extreme. Faces. I heard anime characters are actually based on cats. Yeah, I heard that too. It's like the anatomy behind uh, anime characters is pretty much a cat. Uh, okay, let's talk about eyes. Now, eyes are actually really easy, but I wanted to talk about the placement of things first. So now that we have where our nose is, how do we find out where our mouth is? Right, like that. The difference in spacing between the mouth and the nose is is annoying. I know it's annoying because it was annoying for me, and it still is to this point sometimes. So I'm going to explain to you guys how I do it. So we have another face, and we learned that we can divide this in threes, and we can draw our eyebrows first, and then we can draw our eyes in the right place by drawing a little tapered down box. And that's going to give us a placement for our eyes. And that's going to be the space for our nose bridge. But our nose bridge is a trapezoid that has three sections. It has one going up, a flat side, and one going down. So this is going to be split into three parts as well. It's going to be however wide I want my nose bridge and however tall I want my nose bridge. So three sections to the nose. Okay. They're going to connect to the nose, the, to the eyebrows. So one side is always going to connect to the eyebrows and the other side is going to connect to the other eyebrow. That's just how your nose works. Your nose bridge goes up, up your nose, and then it connects to where your eyebrows go. So this is a nice fluid line that you guys can always count on. So your eyebrows will always connect to your nose bridge and your nose and your eyebrows will also give you your spacing for your eyes by creating a little box tapered down. So now you have eyes in the right place, you have your nose in the right place, and now we got to go on down to the actual mouth.
So remember that we drew a triangle and we connected all the dots to be able to come up with our nose. We're going to use that triangle again to come up with the other measurements for our face. From the edge of this triangle, you're going to continue this triangle down and you're going to create a teardrop. This teardrop is going to give you the muscles that are for your mouth. This is going to be the limitation of your mouth. You're going to have your chin at the bottom, whatever width, or if you want like a butt chin, this is where you draw your butt chin. If you want a big round one, if you want a big squared one, this is where you draw it at the bottom, okay? This spacing right here, all this spacing is essentially going to dictate where your anatomy features go, right? So you have this measurement as a base measurement that you can use to find out where your teeth are too, because your teeth essentially go down from that line in your actual anatomy, if you're simplified it, it goes down from this line into your teeth. This also goes into your cheekbones and creating a little bit of a gap. Okay, so this triangle gives you your cheekbones and it also gives you this little teardrop. So the teardrop is going to have the space for your mouth, upper and body. So your mouth can go up to, you can have it smaller, but it can go up to about half of the width of your eyes. That's normally the range of a mouth. If you have like a mouth that's really open and like really, really happy, that tends to be the limitations of where your mouth goes to. You can always draw that smaller, of course, if you don't want to, but that is essentially what happens. And if you draw your actual anatomy here, you can draw your teeth and stuff like that through your shape. So then from here, you have your chin that has volume, and then you have your bottom lip that also has volume. So now you have something like two voluminous areas and then a plane like this part kind of sinks in a little bit, creating the illusion of volume. So before you get likeness, before you start going into caricatures and you start looking into how to draw people's features, you need to understand what the features are. Uh, you can't really draw features without understanding where to place them. So without knowing where your nose goes and how to draw your like mouth and everything, it becomes really hard to be able to map out the body or give it likeness or exaggerate it or manipulate it to make it look like somebody else. So that's why it's so important that you focus on actually drawing from anatomy-based simplification as opposed to style-based simplification. Because style-based simplification is something that somebody else already went through all this, right? They already learned how to simplify it, and then now you're just copying their style of simplification. That is essentially what the style is. You're copying the style of simplification that somebody else took the time to, to learn. How do you draw the shape of the face? Well, I already explained that, so I'm not going to go over that again. Next time, try to be on time or catch it later on YouTube. But the average, like the average shape of the head is just going to be a sphere with flat sides on the side. So if you draw a sphere, draw a circle inside and then flatten the sides out, you get essentially what consists of a perfect upper part of the skull. And then after that, if you want to get different looks, stop drawing the same shapes Stop drawing just spheres, draw an oval. You know, like draw an oval, draw your chin, and then change your features. Draw your teardrop, draw your triangle, draw your mask from your thing, and then you can just start playing around with different proportions. Okay, once you have this place is backed out, I can draw the mouth really small and make it look good. I can make the mouth really big and make it look good too. I can give this a mustache, I can do whatever the hell I want with this little drawing because it's just a mannequin. This is a mannequin until I decide to add style to it. And that is how you have to approach things. Uh, I like to call these SAMs. Okay? Simple anatomy mannequins. SAM. My SAM is like this. 
this is how I like to draw my, my faces. This is how I simplify my anatomy. To me, this provides me all the knowledge and mapping points that I need to be able to draw my characters in any way I want. Okay? If I wanted to be a nice, like, sexy female, I would just make a little chin. If I want this to be a superhero, I would modify my Sam to make it look like a more masculine character. Right? So my Sam is my base. That's my mannequin. That's my foundations. My style is whatever I decide to do with this. So once I have my face divided in the way that I want, right, then I can choose to give this a different styling. But I have all my landmarks that I can use to be able to draw that accurately without having to rely on anything else other than just my own knowledge. So that is essentially what a SAM is. And that's, that's, the, that's going to be the basis of my how to draw book. So I'm going to show you guys how to draw like SAMs of every part of the body. Uh, please stop posting your nude stuff. Like you're gonna get blocked. This is not the place for this shit. How do you block you? Block. Yep, it's a butt. Removed. It's never cute girls that want to show me nudes. It's always butts. <laughs> uh, so this is essentially how I see it, right? This is how I see you the face for me. Like this is what allows me to draw everything that I draw. Like if you guys want to see some of my work, you guys can go to rodgon.com and check out my production work. So if you guys want to see like rendered stuff, go to rodgon.com and you guys will see what your teacher actually is able to do uh, with his knowledge. <laughs> uh, because I don't normally find myself like drawing a lot of really refined drawings here. Like at all. Most of it is to teach, you know, so you guys don't get to see your, your teacher flexing his skills. Your drawing explanations are amazing. Oh, thank you, man. I do got to check what time it is, though, because I have a thing at 1130. All right. So let's keep going. We have a little bit of time still. So... As you guys can see, I'm using all that little mapping points to be able to put my places in the right place. The moment that I stop guessing where things go, I'm able to actually put some fun into it, right? I'm able to draw things a little bit different, modify it, change it, because I understand it a little bit more. And that is essentially the goal. The goal is not to just draw really cool things. The goal is to draw really cool things that we understand so that we can change them and that we can use them at our own will, not just based on what other people have drawn and limiting ourselves to like having to draw only what other people have done before. Or, you know, like I know it's hard and it's really hard to find your own style and it really is. But understanding all these little mapping points is what's going to get you there. Ears. Okay, ears are easy. So... We talked a little bit earlier about the feature zone, right? The feature zone is if you take a shape, split it into threes, you're gonna get all your features in the middle area. You're gonna have your eyebrows, your eyes, your nose, and your ears. That is all going to be based within the second spacing of your face if you divide it into threes. So if we took this guy and we divide this guy into threes, his ear would be right there. It's also going to line up with your eyebrows and your bottom of your nose, the base of your nose. So the triangle that you draw for the base of your nose and your eyebrows, if you follow that line through, you would get your ear. So that is essentially where you draw your ear. This guy, eyebrows, nose, ear. Eyebrows, nose, equals ear. Eyebrows, nose, equals ear. So drawing like this is not necessarily any different than realism. It's just that I'm drawing the depth 
you know, like in realism, you add depth by adding values. So you add like shadows and you add contrast to be able to get a realistic look, right? You add things to it. You don't add lines to a drawing. You add shadows, you add highlights, you add contrast. That is how you get a realistic look. I'm trying to teach you guys how to achieve a three-dimensional look without having the need to draw shadows. If you guys notice, I don't draw shadows, but yet I still have a lot of depth in my drawings. I have a ton, a ridiculous amount of depth in my drawings, and I never draw a single shadow. I wonder why that is, huh? If you want to draw a nose without a nose bridge, draw a triangle, and then just draw the little swoopy. And then you have just the ball of the nose. And then the rest of the nose bridge will be just, like, imagined in there. Like, a lot of people do that for style. They just kind of imagine the imaginary line that connects it. And then they end up drawing no, no nose bridge. You have, like, a cartoon style. Well, I mean, I have a bunch of different styles. I can go into cartoon. I can go into more, like modify like science fiction, uh, sci-fi, horror, uh, slash comic books, slash, and I can draw a little cute chibi things too. So I have no limitation when it comes down to style because I don't tell myself, ah, oh, I only do this. I tell myself I can do anything. Once I learn how to manipulate my shapes, I can draw anything. And any style fits me. It's just depending on what I want to do. The more styles that I learn, the more I can actually do with my imagination. The more limiting I give myself. Like if I'm like, oh, I'm only a graphic designer. I'm only an animator. I only do, I only do realism because cartooning is for kids. I only do animation because animation is the only way I'd like to express myself. And then you wonder why you end up in like art block that you can't get out of. Right? Like, if you just limit yourself to one kind of art, here is the whole entire art world, right? The entirety of the art world. This is the entire, all the different kinds of art is all here. And you're limiting yourself to this little tiny section. That's you when you do that. This is you. Okay? Don't do that. <laughs> you are an artist, you have access to everything if you allow yourself the ability to do so. So why are you limiting yourself to, I'm a desert designer, I'm just a fashion designer, I'm just an environmental artist, I'm just a character designer. No, don't do that. <laughs> like, that is so silly. You are an artist. An artist is not limited by a medium. They can take anything they touch and make it pretty. That is your power, okay? Your, the power of medical people is to heal people, right? They heal people. Ooh, they, they, they know the knowledge and they know the stuff to make people feel better. Yay, that's doctors. Uh, I don't know. Lawyers argue really well, so they make people like, you know, like do things that they want to through their superpower of talking. You are an artist. You have the ability to touch anything, 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 anything you touch, anything. And just by literally adding a little bit of you to them, you make shit better. You have the Midas touch of prettiness as an artist. So stop making it a limitation for yourself. <laughs> like, don't do that. It's so silly to like limit yourself. Please, how do you do the chin? Oh, when you have your face. So let's draw some profiles. So when you have your face, if you wanna draw a cool profile, just take your shape, divide it into three, divide this into three, draw the ear and the features in the feature zone. You already know that the front box, the front box that we draw is going to be divided into three, right? And all my features fall within that first box. So I'm going to draw all my features within that first box, and I'm going to have my little spacing properly with the rest of my head. Okay. Then the next step is just to connect my ear to the front of my face. I can decide to keep it at that level like that, and that's perfectly fine. But if you want to have like the little chin, 
just add a little protuberance that comes up. Just add a little bit, or a lot, depending on what you want. Just add it to the top. Like I, like I said, it's just a different element. Like, like I see it as a completely different element to the face. Like if I'm drawing, I normally draw, even if I'm drawing superheroes, I'll draw my base shape, my Sam, the way that I understand it. Right? I'll draw my Sam the way that I know it, and I'm going to then add the things that I need to to make that character look like a superhero. Okay, so you go and you do your Sam first so that you know you're placing things right, and then you add all your elements of style that you want to your design. How do you about next? Every time I draw a face, ooh, oh my God, oh dear God, you guys are going to shit your pants. Like, I discovered the easiest way to draw the neck. Like, it's so easy. Like, like it just makes so much sense. Like, we just, we talked about this all over, like, last week. So, I'm going to show you guys how to see the neck for my secret stash of lessons. I'm going to show you guys how to draw the neck like an eye. So, essentially, drawing an eye on the top of your rib cage gives you the perfect spacing for your neck muscles and for your neck. So let's practice that right now. Let's try that out. So let's draw a face, because all of us, we are so, so good at drawing faces. We draw faces all the time, and then we just never draw anything past that. So let's draw a nice little face right here. Okay, I'm gonna have this guy right there. I'm gonna give myself my ears. Cool, and we have our chin. I'm gonna draw a little extra shape on top of my body and I'm going to trace my shapes. And now we gotta find out how to draw the neck. Ugh, why is it always the neck? Why is it always here that's so hard, right? Well, what we're gonna do is we are going to draw an eye. <laughs> Just draw an eye. That's kind of more overly than not, right? An eye, doo -doo -doo. and then just connect the ear to the cylinder. And you have your neck muscles and your collarbone that leads down to your rib cage. It's really cool. Um, so let's try it again. We're going to got an eye ah, head. Okay, we're gonna find our ears, that's important. And then we're gonna draw an eye in whatever direction we want our body to go. And then we're gonna connect the ears to that. I know that's a really long neck, but you guys get the idea. This also gives you your shoulders. Now let's draw this in an actually accurate thing instead of like a floating head. So let's draw a head, we'll draw a very basic chin, draw some eyes, some ears, eyes, nose, okay? Drawing a simple eye gives you the connection points that you need and the muscles and the mapping points for the rest of the body. The neck, yay, how much is with the neck? Thank you, you're welcome. So now when you're drawing your characters, if you just wanna add a proper neck, now you know that that's the neck, that's the color part of the eye, draw some sides to your eyes, and now you have the proper spacing for your rib cage. Let's do it with this guy. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to go into hands today, but there is a video that I have called 100 Hand Challenge. 
that you guys can check out that explains hands in complete detail and everything you might need. So now that you draw your rib cage, doo -doo 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 -doo, we're going to draw an eye at the top of the rib cage, and then that's going to be how we place our necks. <laughs> this is like a horrible, horrible doodle. I'm going to cover that up. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I just doodle really quick things and I regret it. Okay, let's cover that up with a prettier sketch. <laughs> A prettier example. Let's do our rib cage. We'll draw an eyeball at the top of the rib cage in any way you want, as long as it has three sections, right? It has to have your cylinder for your neck, and it has to have two little angle points for your collarbone and your neck muscles. So it ends up being an eye that's kind of like this. If you're looking at the head from the top, you would have your pectoral muscles right here, your neck. And then your shoulders would connect at the front and the back of your body. So your eye ends up getting little ears, and that is your shoulders. So when you have your neck and you draw your eye, if you want to come up with your arms, it's going to be a little shape that connects from the front and the back of this shape. And that's what's going to lead to you being able to draw your arms a little bit cooler. From the front view, well, the eye gets thinner as you turn your head up. So if you go and you turn your head up, you're going to have your rib cage and the eye is going to be a lot thinner because you're looking up. That collarbone is going up, but you still have that mapping point. To help you. Uh, we're not doing legs today, but doing a leg that's bent is just like a little sushi. Like, get used to drawing this basic shape and learning how to overlap it a little bit so you get different legs. And that's how you simplify legs. Uh, the shoulder connection. Well, the shoulder, the reason that it's hard is because we get taught to draw shoulders like this. Right? They teach us how to draw shoulders like this, and then we wonder why we can't understand how those stupid muscles connect. Well, that's not how your body works. Your body works like this. You have your collarbone. Uh, let's draw it different. You have your collarbone and your rib cage. Your collarbone is at the top of your rib cage, about a th the top fourth of your rib cage. That's roughly where your collarbone is going to go, the upper fourth of your rib cage. Okay, and then it's going to extend a little bit past your body. Your rib cage and your collarbone don't line up. You have to have your eye be a little bit bigger than your rib cage. Okay, that's what gives you. And your neck comes up your rib cage, and your neck tends to come up, hogging your rib cage into your neck muscles. The reason that you get your side muscles at the top here is from your collarbone extending past it. Your arms connect at the edge of your collarbone. That's why it's important to draw it past it. Your, rib, uh, your arms don't come from your body. They come from your collarbone and they connect with your shoulders and your pectoral muscles. And they intersect like this. This is the reason that it's hard to be able to draw that part because you got to realize it's your shoulder, then your pectoral, then your arm. So it goes one, two, three. And when you're drawing it in different positions, you have to think about it. Shoulder, pectoral, arm. Sh shoulder, pectoral, arm. And then if you think about it like that, it becomes a little bit easier. If you're looking with your arm to go up, your collarbone goes up alongside with your arm. If your collarbone, is, your arm is laying flat, you end up with your arm on the side. But your collarbone moves up if your arm rotates up. 
which makes it into another mobile part of your body. But at the same time, it's very easy to map it out by drawing an eye at the top. Uh, child and kid faces are incredibly easy to draw differently. Just when you draw an adult face, have the features more towards the middle. If you want a kid face, draw the features more towards the bottom, giving the character a little bit bigger forehead, making it look like a kid. So you move the features up for adults and you move the features down to give them forehead for the kids. I do have a YouTube video. I have a YouTube channel with over 400 videos now. So you guys can go check those out anytime you guys want. They are free. They will not be charged. And that's just for you guys to learn and be able to spend hours and hours and hours and hours listening to my annoying voice uh, talking about weird stuff. Yep, that's it. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to have to cut it short a little bit because I have an onward uh, call with the um, International World illustration championships committee so i need to see what i'm going to be requiring to be able to compete for the third time there by the way i always make it to the semifinals, but they never like they never move me past that and i think that's bullshit but anyways have a wonderful day everybody i will be uploading a video to youtube that's different than this one if you guys want to catch something new and if you guys just want to browse around those videos there's over 400 videos now for you guys to enjoy and just learn anything you guys feel like doing you know, so I will always aim to help you guys as long as I can. The way that you guys can help support is by liking, sharing my stream and also purchasing my books. If you guys feel like you guys want to support me in a financial way, I don't take donations. I just don't even know what to do with them on TikTok. So if you guys donate, that's awesome. That will eventually be a fun for like a new printer or something like that or a new monitor. But if you guys want to do help support the cause and you guys enjoy what I do and you guys want to learn a little bit more and have something cool to have with you guys, then you guys can purchase my books and they are meant to help you guys learn and actually progress with your art as well. Even though they're not how to draw books, they're meant as reference books and practice books. So you guys have all these sketches at your disposal anytime that you guys want. And you guys can draw over them, you guys can go ahead and like stylize them, you guys can use them as reference, take pictures, draw them on your iPad. So use them as your sketch so you guys don't have to worry about anatomy. You know, I provide thousands of sketches so you guys can do that. So feel free to go browse those books. A new book is coming out this week in the form of pinups. And that is going to be awesome because it's like 100 pages and thousands of fucking pinups and it's so cool. I just, uh, so good. <laughs> Anyways, have a wonderful day, everybody. And I'm going to send you guys off with a nice little message so that you guys have a wonderful start to your week. And I'm just going to draw them out. So I already have them drawn from this morning. I want you guys to go outside or no, no, not even go outside. I just want you guys to show a little bit of kindness to someone today. There was a big natural disaster happening in California. So maybe check in on your friends that live in California, Southern California, up north. Make sure that they are okay. They're doing fine, that they don't need anything. And they might be like, okay, health-wise, you know. It, it hit some people really hard. And it's something that you guys might want to do. So show a little bit of love to someone today and do that. I want you guys to also go out into the world. And I want you guys to enjoy a little bit of sunlight. I know it rained and shit like yesterday on the West Coast. But if you didn't have to experience that, go out and enjoy a little bit of the rain. Fuck it. Get wet. Jump around. Yay! Have fun. You know? Yay! Being in the rain is not always bad. <laughs> I also want you guys to... Oh, so you guys need to live a little so you guys can actually draw stuff, by the way, too. Like, you guys can't always be stuck at home like you can't like if you want to be a good artist you need to experience life and you need to experience cultures you need to experience different things so that you can actually make your own portrayal of them if you don't do that and you stay home you're never gonna be as successful as you could be so i recommend you guys go out and you guys live life a little laughter laughter is such an important thing joy in general is such a such an important thing within us and without joy a lot of us tend to not be able to create so i want you guys to put on your favorite podcast your favorite movie your favorite show call your best friend that knows all the dad jokes in the world and ask them to tell you the worst ones so you guys can laugh a little and then since we are artists and it depends on whatever medium you choose you know it doesn't have to be a pencil it doesn't have to be a pen it doesn't have to be a sketchbook whatever medium it is that you use 
make sure that you go out and you draw as much as you can because that's the only way you guys can get better and that's the way that we practice and get improvement in our drawing. We can't do that and we can't make things click unless we actually go out and do them. So make sure that you guys are constantly practicing pushing your limits and using your sketchbook to learn and be able to enhance yourself. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful Monday and I hope that you guys have a fantastic start to your week. Uh, start all those projects that you guys are postponing. I know that you guys are postponing a project. I am too. Don't do that. <laughs> Jump on it. Get at least one thing done for that today. And that will be your homework, right? Honor system here. So have a wonderful day, everybody. See you guys tomorrow for another lesson. And I hope that you guys uh, are awesome because I think so. And you guys are great. Take care. Love you.